Let's go do some Persian karaoke. You might be wondering why I'm dancing like this at an Iranian nightclub in Los Angeles. Let me explain. My name is Yara. No, not that Yara, the half black, half Iranian actress. I'm a different Yara, but like her, I'm also Iranian American. My parents immigrated from Iran and settled in Northern California, where I was born and raised. But even though I've been in the States pretty much my whole life, I've always felt sort of in between, meaning both American and, well, Iranian. This is especially true now. Iran, a terrorist nation, like few others. As attempts have been made to ban Iranians and other Middle Easterners from entering the U.S. Complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States. If we are people, we are not the government. I am American and Iranian. I've been made very aware of my Iranian identity. All this got me thinking, what does it mean to be both Iranian and American? And is this the first time we've had to deal with something like this? To answer that, I decided to head to the world's largest community of Iranians, outside of Iran, which happens to be in Los Angeles, or as people here call it, Tehrangelis. We're stuck in traffic. Hey Siri, where is Tehrangelis? You don't have a Tehrangelis. What is that? Siri was useless. So I asked Iranian-American writer Porchista Hakpur, who grew up in L.A. Hi, how are you? To show me the symbolic center of the Iranian community here, Westwood Boulevard, also known as Persian Square. So we're basically entering Tarangelis now. This is where the heart of it is. Growing up, Porchista's parents would drive the family 40 minutes almost every weekend to get to Westwood. I imagine my parents must have been very hard to afford it, but they wanted to have me be in touch with culture. Oh, That's here we go. Point. Okay, shikar chi kabab. Taste of Tehran. Oh, taste of Tehran, oh, taste of Tehran is right Tehran. here. If you think they're Iranian out here, they're definitely Iranian. The whole place is like a little slice of Iran in America. Everything is written in Persian, also known as Farsi, the official language of Iran. You walk into stores and immediately start speaking Persian. Salam. Salam. There's tons of Iranian people everywhere. <laughs> and Iranian food. I'm gonna eat this tongue sandwich. Oh my god, these. This is Iranian fruit leather made in Iran. My That's mom's very... full refrigerator and kitchen is all this stuff. There's even a shop that sells Iranian music. It's estimated there's about one million Iranian Americans, and about half of them live in Southern California. But why did so many Iranians choose LA? I met up with sociologist Ali Akbar Mahdi to find out. He offered a few reasons. Number one. The weather in Los Angeles is very much like Tehran. It's warm. Number two. California is the place where the communities that exist here, Latinos, Asians, Arabs, Iranians, each of them have their independent community. An immigrant could literally be who they want to be. And number three. Once a group has come, you're gonna have a base, and that begins to attract other people. This is now a largest community of Iranian outside of Iran. Walking around Tehrangelis, I realized that a lot of Iranians here call themselves Persian, unlike Porochista and me. But why is that? Iranians like me, like when we first got to America, everybody was saying Persian. Everything, Nobody the word Iran was negative. With. Yeah, it was okay. horrible. So out of survival, people like my parents and their generation started saying Persian. I, I don't mm. blame them. Iranians don't even say they're Iranian. Iranians say they're Persian. I am not dangerous. I am Persian. <laughs> I am Persian like the cat. Meow. What did that first massive wave of Iranian immigrants need to protect themselves from? Iranians who confronted the stereotypes and prejudices after hostage crisis, they needed a protective shield. And Persia and Persian gave them that cover. What was the hostage crisis? Let me give you a quick rundown. In 1979, Iranians had a revolution. They got rid of their American-backed king, the Shah, and established an Islamic Republic led by this guy, Ayatollah Khomeini. The Shah fled his country and, at one point, went to the U.S. for medical treatment. 
anti-Shah students wanted the United States to return him to Iran to face trial. So they broke into the American embassy in Tehran and took dozens of American diplomats hostage. 52 Americans were held for 444 days. Their ordeal, known as the hostage crisis, became a fixture of American TV news. Day 314 of the hostage crisis in Iran. Nightly newscasts show the same images over and over again. Burning American flags, fist pumping Iranians, and blindfolded American hostages. As a result, anti-Iranian sentiments started to seep into the American psyche. Iranians were demonized in books, movies, this is a backward primitive country, and music. The hostage crisis also took a toll on public opinion. By 1980, some 60% of Americans had a negative view of Iran. Fast forward to 1989, and that skyrocketed to 91%. This hit especially hard for poor Chista, whose family fled Iran after the revolution, a time when many other Iranians left the country. When she arrived in the U.S., she was just a little kid. This is my brother and I. He was born in the U.S. I was born in Iran. Then we were refugees in Paris, and then we got to the U.S. I can't emphasize enough how horrible when we got to the U.S. in the early 80s. I mean, I was so young, but I remember all of it vividly because I was so traumatized by the atmosphere of hatred in America. I was just made fun of constantly. There was a lot of anti-Iranian sentiments and I would get that on playgrounds. I heard Dune, Goon. There was Sand and Word, Camel Jockey. Camel Jockey? What is camel Jockey. What is that? Do you know that slur, Camel Jockey? No. It, is, it was a predominant slur used against um, people from Iran and possibly the rest of the Middle East in the 80s. It was in that very political climate that Mashti Shirvani opened his ice cream shop, Mashti Malone's. His brother Mehdi joined him in 1988 and helped expand the business. The two are often credited with bringing Persian ice cream to LA. جناب آقای مشتی اگر لطف کنید چی شد وارد این عرصه بستنی شدین شما بستنی از هپی بیزنس راحت بشیم یه بستنی می‌خوید شاد بشی داس اور بس سالر هیر ساف فرام روز واتر داس جینجر روز واتر اند دن دیر از اورنج بلاسم وت پساشیو بهار نارنج دس از دی دی پرژن فالوده بات وی میکس دت وت ساور چری ساور چری فالوده از میڈ اف روز روز واتر وت رایس استارچ نودلز او دات ون از مای فیورت Oh my, I feel like I'm, I'm literally sitting in my grandma's house right now. Mashti Malone's is seen as an LA institution now, but when Mashti first opened his shop in 1980, during the hostage crisis, things were not so easy for Iranians. There was a couple young American there, then they started punching me in my chest that go back to your country, but trying to push یه آقای لبنانی بود که اونجا دارو خونه داشت فهمید چی اومد جلو اینا که ایمان سه هی هی یو گایز آر این رانگ پلیس اینا ایرونی نیسته ایما ها ایرونی نیسته ایما ها عربیم اینا سو دهت تایم ای گات سیف انتی ایران پروتست ور هپنینگ آل اوور دی کنتری فرم واشنگتن دی سی تو بیورلی هیلز ون اف دم واز ایون ارگنایز بای کالیفورنیا ستیت سینیتر ای مین ایوری بودی کود سی دات they kind of associated people with the government. So whatever the government uh, did, people here got punished for it too. All the Iranian students, they were afraid to say they're Iranian. I was the only one who came, I didn't know myself as an Iranian, but I was afraid of myself. This is a giant container of saffron. We may get robbed, this is... Oh my God, I don't think I've ever seen this much saffron in one place. In spite of what happened to him during the hostage crisis years, Mashti doesn't hold any grudges. When I was in the U.S., I was very proud of him. 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 In Los Angeles, the Americans were very proud of the Iranians. They were very proud of him. Where are you from? Where are you from? This is the, the best temperature to try ice cream. You can taste the cardamom in this thing. What is your goal with this bastani? I had a job in Iran. I had a job in this bastani. I wanted to have a job from Iran. What I realized from Mashti and Mehdi is that those who came before me, the people who established the Iranian-American community, they went through a lot. I didn't have to deal with the immediate fallout from the hostage crisis, and I'm thankful for that. But me and other second-generation Iranian-Americans have had to deal with something else, something that made us feel like others in our own country. 
Hey guys, thanks for watching the first episode of our four part series on Iranian Americans. Don't forget to subscribe to catch the next episode in the series because there's breakdancing, rare Iranian food, and so much more.